well, and speaking of saber rattling in Taiwan, we should move on to China because mm -hmm. there's huge news. Again, this is a headline from NPR. We can go ahead and put the first element up here. We're talking about 800 million possible COVID infections in China. And as NPR puts it, that means about 10% of the planet's population may become infected over the course of the next 90 days. This is coming as China, we've covered it here, took a couple steps back from its lockdown mentality or its policies that were zero COVID, known as zero COVID by Xi Jinping, a huge thrust of his broader policy was zero COVID. We are locking everything down. In some cases, that means sealing people into buildings. Um, and the result is that this, this is not a population prepared to weather surges. And what's happening exactly right now is a, a surge that China really doesn't have the ability to, to safely deal with, or even the will to safely deal with. What do you make of this development? Um, because again, there's going to be new COVID variants, and we've made peace with that mm -hmm. here in the United States. Uh, it was, I think, difficult. It took some, politically, culturally, it took about a year uh, of, of Omicron and other variants to say, we have, this is not something that we can control, but it is something that we can mitigate with responsible policies that allow people to live their lives, not to exacerbate addictions and suicides and, and loneliness and mental health problems and economic problems downstream of all of that. We can have policies that control and mitigate it. China has no experience with that. Right, and zero COVID was demonstrably uh, unsustainable because it led to the types of protests that were threatening the regime itself because the restrictions had just gone uh, so into such absurd and draconian directions that people were standing up against them uh, you know that that you would take a toddler away from their away from their parents based on secondhand exposure like just absolutely extreme measures mm -hmm. and so at the same time uh, the, the Chinese government did not use the time that they effectively built with their zero, zero COVID strategy to get the elderly population vaccinated. There, there was a, a it, it seems like the data shows that the Chinese vaccines have been less effective yeah. than, uh, than the American vaccines at preventing kind of illness, severe illness and death. Uh, but also there's been even less up, uptake among the elderly Chinese population. And it's, it's, it's curious that you can have a, uh, an authoritarian government that can weld somebody into an apartment but, but can't get their elderly population vaccinated. There, there's some type of gap there that I can't quite figure out. Um, and so they go into this relaxation of zero COVID with uh, an, an already aging population more vulnerable than they would be otherwise had they been uh, vaccinated. What, what's your read on why an authoritarian government like this can't do the thing that you would think an authoritarian government could do. No, it's the easiest thing. Right, just you know, the jabs, like that's. Yeah, I mean, I think in general, it was this this problem politically was zero COVID, was just dogging uh, Xi Jinping. And if you're, I mean, so the when you look at how that's handled, right now you have a population that it doesn't have a lot of natural immunity, period, um, because people have just plainly not been infected to any degree. They haven't, you know, gotten over smaller COVID infections. They really just, like most people have not been infected with COVID. And so now they have a very transmissible variant spreading. They have a few variants spreading, um, but you have this really transmissible one that to the point where even zero COVID may not have prevented a huge mm -hmm. surge and a huge spread of the virus. Um, and you have a population with a, a vaccine that's perhaps not as effective as people hope that it would be, no natural immunity, and uh, exhaustion with intense lockdowns. So I, I think it was just a botched response all the way around that there was no expectation or anticipation that this, this type of thing could happen. Right. Because if we can always have zero COVID, we can weather the storm for several years until COVID goes away, and we can pop back out like hibernation um, and you know mostly be fine, then you're not as, the incentive to push for that third shot isn't as high, especially if it's not preventing infection, which as it came to uh, be realized is that it prevents severe, uh, it, it can help mitigate the severity, it's not going to prevent infection. So I think it was probably just not as high of a priority because zero COVID was seen as the ticket. Like this is what is going to take China out of this. And there are now implications 
significant implications for the U.S. population. One of them, and if you've been sick lately, you have probably realized how difficult it is to find cold medications, to find ibuprofen, yes. children, both children's, children's uh, Motrin. And, and adult. Uh, and there are images uh, coming out of China of, of Chinese people kind of mobbing uh, ibuprofen factories. Mm. So, and you're, they're also going, so just aside from that, you're going to see, I think, a diversion of cold medications that otherwise would be exported to Europe, to the United States, to other countries, used for domestic purposes, mm. um, because there are so many people getting sick that need them. Uh, and we're now uh, facing a situation where you have, uh, what's it called, RSV, uh, uh, other viruses that are circulating in the population, uh, you know, COVID variants still going through the American population, flu, flu uh, ripping through, all of it layered on top of people's uh, diminished uh, uh, immunocapacity as a result of uh, lockdowns and the, and the pandemic, just from people not getting sick as much, you know, from 2020 on, uh, th they're they're now getting hit harder. And so there's there's been a run on uh, Advil, ibuprofen, Motrin, Tylenol, all, all of the different uh, cold medications to the point where s some drugstores are rationing them. And I would suspect that that's going to get worse before it gets better because of the situation um, in, Ch in China. There's, you know, 8 billion people on this planet that are all going to be getting sick together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, with no real clear idea of what a balancing mitigation policy looks like. And here in the United States, it took us a while, and especially in certain states, to figure out what that <coughs> should look like, how you can keep people safe um, in terms of their mental health, in terms of their uh, physical health, and in terms of their economic health. Um, what does that look like? What do those policies look like? And again, China has had zero COVID to the point where they, they lock down places that are seeing waves, contain the wave geographically and life goes on as usual in other places where there's no COVID, then there's COVID, like a switch, yeah. get shut down. Um, and so that's not, like, they, they haven't had experience really allowing their population to exist with some semblance of normalcy while also trying to mitigate the spread of something that could n knock a whole lot of people into hospitals um, and, and possibly worse, tragically worse. So again, uh, you know, the NPR reports that there's some actually vaccine hesitancy in China as well. Some doctors mm -hmm. have been nervous about administering it to elderly patients. And China's healthcare system, depending on whether you're in a city or a rural area, is very, very different. And that will, I, I expect, affect all of this as well. Um, but, but also, they just didn't have the incentive to go super hard on uh, those those third shots and on the shots in general because zero COVID was seen as- a, But a lot of them have zero shots. So, yeah. it, I mean, it was right. seen as like, th this was the policy, this was taking care of it. So it wasn't necessarily, um, the, the demand right. uh, from the government wasn't as high because they really thought that they were on top of it. Yeah, they had a chance to do it like New Zealand, basically. New Zealand pursued a kind of zero COVID type of approach, but their effort was to keep it off their island. I was going to say, I mean, it's a tiny and, country right, compared it, to China. Right, but it was, they were effective at keeping it out. And But then, once the vaccine came out, uh, they used that opportunity to, to vaccinate their elderly population. And then they were able to relax their restrictions and get to a, a place that's more like uh, where we are, where you know, you're still seeing COVID ripping through, um, but you're not seeing uh, the cataclysmic uh, fatality rates that you saw you know, in, in 2020. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just wanna give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only, for you.